All right, thrill seekers. I feel like I have covered this topic already on this video channel, but when I went down through the list of uh, videos over the past year or so, I think I went back a year, I didn't see it in there. I, I've, I got two people asking me the same question right back to back within a couple of days of each other, and I always think, well, maybe there's some reason, you know, maybe this is the universe telling me I need to address this question. So the question is, counting your breath in zazen so a lot of times when zazen instructions are given part of the instructions is that you are to count your breath during zazen practice so you count the exhalations this is the way i heard it exhalations one to ten so each time you ex exhale that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten not that fast obviously unless you're you know, just got off a marathon just before you started doing zazen, and then you start again from from one after you get to ten. Uh, I first heard this, I think, from oh Jesus, he's eating those nuts off the ground again. That's Ziggy. Hold we got this loquat uh, plant in the in the yard there. These are loquats, and they have these seeds in them, like this big. And and Ziggy gets into the loquats. I don't even know if he eats the fruit. He he likes crunching on the seeds. But every time he, he after he crunches on some of these seeds and eats them, he he vomits. You know, sometimes he vomits on the rug. Sometimes he, he just he gets it all over the place. So I don't like him to do that. And you know, it's not good for him and and all that stuff. So anyway, okay, what was I saying? Okay, counting the breaths in zazen. So you count the exhalations, 1 to 10. And I believe, I must have first heard this from uh, Tim, my first Zen teacher. I don't know where he got it, but it's not a non-standard. It's I hate double negatives. It's a standard sort of instruction that you hear in a lot of places where they teach you how to do zazen. They're probably telling people to do this. Uh, well, this is probably why I'm getting this question about why, whether you should uh, count your breaths uh, when doing zazen or not. Now, if you look at the, the standard version of uh, zazen instructions in the Soto school, it's called Fukan Zazengi and not Fukan Zazenji. It's not Italian, it's Japanese. Every time you see a G in Japanese, when it's translated or literated into Roman letters, it is a G sound and never a J sound, so it's not Italian. Anyway, uh, in Fukan Zazenji, <laughs> Fukan Zazengi, there's a central section which describes the practice of Zazen in detail, and I'm just going to read it to you because it's short. In general, a quiet room is good for practicing zazen, and food and drink are taken in moderation. Cast aside all involvements, give the myriad things a rest, do not think of good and bad, do not consider right and wrong, stop the driving movement of mind, will, consciousness, cease intellectual consideration through images, thoughts, and reflections, do not aim to become a Buddha, how could this be connected with sitting or lying down? We usually spread a thick mat on the place where we sit and use a round cushion on top of that. Either sit in the full lotus posture or sit in the half lotus posture. And my teacher also considered what they call Burmese to be the full lotus posture, but that's a whole other video, so let's just keep going. To sit in the full lotus posture, put the right foot on the left thigh, then put the left foot on the right thigh. To sit in the half lotus posture, just press the left foot into the right thigh. Spread the clothing loosely and make it neat, then put the right hand above the left foot and place the left hand on the right palm, the thumbs meet and support each other. Just make the body right and sit up straight. Do not lean to the left, incline to the right, slouch forward or lean backward. The ears must be aligned with the shoulders and the nose aligned with the navel. Hold the tongue against the palate, keep the lips and teeth closed and keep the eyes open. Breathe softly through the nose. When the physical posture is already settled, make one complete exhalation and sway left and right. Sitting immovably in the mountain still state, think about this concrete state beyond thinking. How can the state beyond thinking be thought about? It is different from thinking. This is just the pivot of zazen. And that's what he says about uh, how to do zazen. There's nothing in there about counting breaths, and there is also nothing in there about contemplating a koan. It's just pretty straightforward. Uh, the mental side, of course, is, is a whole ball of wax, and everybody worries about what to do mentally. And that's, I think, where the counting the breath thing comes in, but he doesn't say anything about counting the breath, so this does not come from Dogen. In fact, if we look up a Dogen's extensive record, and we go to 
Dharma Hall Discourse 390, which the translators have helpfully titled How to Breathe in Zazen. The translators added those titles. The Dharma Hall Discourses did not have titles. But here is what Dogen says there about counting the breath. In the Zazen of patch-robed monks, first you should sit correctly with upright posture, then regulate your breath and settle your mind. In the lesser vehicle, originally there were two gateways, uh, two methods, uh, gateways as methods, which were counting the breaths and contemplating impurity. They would actually contemplate uh, dead bodies and, and think of gross things, and that was part of the practice. I don't know much about that, but that's, that's a thing. Anyway, in the lesser vehicle, that's Hinayana, and that's a derogatory term, and people don't use it anymore, but Dogen comes from a different time. In the lesser vehicle, people used counting to regulate their breath. However, the Buddha ancestors' engagement of the way always differed from the lesser vehicle. So he's saying it's not that way. A Buddha ancestor said, even if you arouse the mind of a leprous wild fox, never practice the self-regulation of the two vehicles. In the Mahayana, there is also a method for regulating breath, which is knowing that one breath is long, another breath is short. The breath reaches the tanden, basically the diaphragm, and comes up from the tanden. Although exhale and inhale differ, both of them occur depending on the tanden. Impermanence is easy to clarify and regulating the mind is easy to accomplish. My late teacher, Tendong Rujing, also known as Tendo Nyojo, said, Breath enters and reaches the Tanden, and yet there is no place from which it comes. Therefore, it is neither long nor short. Breath emerges from the Tanden, and yet there is nowhere that it goes. Therefore, it is neither long nor short. My late teacher said it like that. Suppose someone were to ask me, Ehe, Master, how do you regulate your breath? I would simply say to him, Although it is not the great vehicle, it differs from the lesser vehicle. Although it is not the lesser vehicle, it differs from the great vehicle. So I guess he's kind of putting down the Mahayana as well as the Hinayana, but he's saying there's just one Buddhism. It's not greater and lesser vehicle. Suppose that person inquired again, ultimately, what is it? I would tell him, exhale and inhale are neither long nor short. And he says some other stuff in there, but I'm going to skip it because it's not uh, directly related to what I want to say. But I like the conclusion he gets to. After a pause, Dogen said, When healthy and energetic, we do zazen without falling asleep. When hungry, we eat rice and know we are fully satisfied. So there you go. Nothing about counting breath. In fact, he kind of puts down counting of breath in there pretty strongly. He says, basically, don't count the breath. Now here is a thing from Shunryu Suzuki uh, called Breathing. This is from the book Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind. Uh, as I mentioned uh, in an earlier video, I ordered a copy of this for myself because I didn't have one and I had to borrow the Angel City Zen Center's copies. But I got the one with the original cover, which uh, I like better than the new cover. Shunryu Suzuki says, When we practice Zazen, our mind always follows our breathing. When we inhale, the air comes into the inner world. When we exhale, the air goes out to the outer world. The inner world is limitless, and the outer world is also limitless. I know I read this before because I remarked on that line, because I love that line. The inner world and the outer world are limitless. So normally we think of the outer world as, as limitless, like outer space goes on forever, you know, or practically forever. Nobody knows if it goes on forever or not. But we usually think of the inner world as being limited, but he's saying the inner world is also limitless. Uh, because if you think of space, space when it's empty is, is essentially limitless because emptiness can't be measured. There you go. That's a good stoner thought for you on a Thursday morning. We say inner world or outer world, but actually there is just one whole world. Another great line. In this limitless world, our throat is like a swinging door. The air comes in and goes out like someone passing through a swinging door. If you think I breathe, the I is extra. There is no you to say I. What we call I is just a swinging door which moves when we inhale and when we exhale. It just moves, that is all. When your mind is pure and calm enough to follow this movement, there is nothing. No eye, no world, no mind, nor body, just a swinging door.
and he goes on from there, but it's and it's really good, and I encourage you to read it, but it's kind of beside my point. So, is counting your breath in Zazen good or bad? Well, why are you asking me? I mean, why do you trust my opinion? Well, maybe you trust my opinion because I've done Zazen a long time, and I'll just tell you how it's been for me. Because I first learned the counting of breath thing as one of the methods for doing Zazen, and then years and years and years later, when studying with Nishijima Roshi, he mentioned this uh, Eihei Koroku thing and said counting breath is not what Dogen recommends. And I was like, oh, you know, I'd already been doing Zazen for a long, long time, even doing it with him for a long, long time when he'd never mentioned this stuff and I was counting my breath. So at that point, I was like, okay, I better stop counting my breath. That's not the way you do it. But because I'd already formed this habit of counting breath during Zazen, I still kept returning to it without even really thinking about it. You know, I didn't decide, oh, I'm going to count my breath now, here goes, and then count my breath. I just would start doing it, just spontaneously, like, you know, it just came up. And I still do that. You know, this has been, uh, that was 20 or more years ago when I decided to stop, and now I'm st I still do it. Counting breath, I find, is somewhat useful, I say this in a kind of grudging sense, if your mind is just going blah blah blah, oh no, this thing that happened today, or the other thing, or the political thing, or the thing I saw in the news, or this and that, you know, whatever it is that's like, you know, getting your mind riled up. Uh, I can go and start counting breath and uh, by doing so kind of make that stop, or, or at least kind of quell it down, I don't know if quell is a real word, but it kind of kind of keep it down. But counting breath is not truly goalless practice, practice because you're trying to do something. You're, you're making your mind do a thing. You know, you're kind of getting in there deliberately, upholding the sense that there is an I, that, that uh, Shinryu Suzuki says there isn't, who can come in there and say, no, stop doing that thing. But you're really... You're, you're fighting mind with mind, you're fighting thought with thought, and it's, it's ultimately the problem that you came in to the practice and started the practice to solve, you're actually doing that same problem. You're using the mind to control the mind, or you're trying to use the mind to control the mind, using thought to control thought. It won't work. It just won't work. It's it's like, uh, what's the Koto Sawaki? It's like giving the, giving the keys to your house to the thief, I think is the, the uh, metaphor that he uses. So it's kind of like that. You're just, you're, you're, caught, you're using the problem that you're trying to solve to solve the problem you're trying to solve, but meanwhile reinforcing the problem that you're trying to, to, to solve. So I think Dogen is right, and it's better not to count the breath. But I have, you know, compassion <laughs> uh, for people who are just beginning this practice. And I know how hard it is and how it just feels crummy. And, and you feel like, oh, my God, I'll never stop thinking about my ex-girlfriend or whatever the hell it is that you're thinking about. And, and you need something or you feel like you need something to kind of make that get a little calmer. And counting breath is a fairly neutral thing. Like, it's, it's not... You know, being from the the anti koan contemplation side of the fence, the the Soto school doesn't get into that. I would think that that koan com contemplation is much more of a, 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 a ego reinforcer, or can be, than counting breath. You know, counting breath is fairly neutral, or you know, doing a mantra or something like that. I mean, it's kind of the same as doing a mantra. A mantra is just something, you, you re repetitive phrase you introduce to your mind, and by getting into that repetitive phrase over and over, it, it makes it kind of feel like uh, the mind is calm and, and, you know, serene or whatever, but it's not really calm and serene. It's just been kind of pushed down to make it feel like it's calm and serene, you know? It's like, it's like a, a bending a hose to stop the, the water, you know, if you ever did that when you are a kid, and as soon as you let it go, it goes like that. I think that's kind of what you're doing. So I say I don't really recommend counting the breath, but also it's not, you know, it's not the worst thing you can do. It's not going to ruin your zazen or anything like that. But that's, you know, that's how I feel about counting the breath. I, I hope that 
was not too incredibly unclear. Anyway, if you want to contribute to me making more videos that are incredibly unclear, here's the URL where you can send your donations to me. That is my only, only way of making a living right now. I'm not uh, doing book tours and, and making money off royalties. I'm getting my money from you. So I thank you very much. But if you're having financial trouble or you're having difficulty, I offer this stuff for free. So it's, it's fine. If you don't donate, don't worry about it. It's cool. But those of you who do donate are keeping me afloat, so I appreciate that very much, and I thank you, as I do all the time. See you later. Have a good time all the time. Bye. Oh, you're biting my foot now. Ow. Ow. Ziggy, you're biting me. Why are you trying to bite my foot? Ow. 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 Ow.